So that's new. Wow. All right. I want this chainsaw to be drill start. I'm sick of pulling and it's kind of finicky starting sometimes and it really sucks to exhaust yourself before you even start cutting. So I went on YouTube, I see the people do it. It's a thing, you can, you can drill start a chainsaw. The catch is that once the engine starts turning over, it takes off on its own. And if you are rigidly coupled to it, it can take the drill out of your hand and surprise you or hurt you or break something or whatever. So you need some kind of a one-way mechanism, a ratchet or a slip clutch or something. Same way that a pull start does. It's pull start has a piece with some teeth on it that go in here and these little swingy doodads engage it. And when you pull the cord, it turns the flywheel and starts the engine. And then when the cord winds back up and when the engine's spinning, it just freewheels. So out on the internet, most people buy a starter drive or a ratcheting socket adapter, something that's uh spins one way and doesn't spin the other way, and then they impact that nut on super tight and then start it that way. Well, I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if I used the existing one-way ratchet mechanism that's already built in here? So as a prototype, as a proof of concept, I made this. And this is a lump of steel with that profile cut into it. And... Uh, something you can chuck up in a drill. I used this for a couple of weeks. I left the side cover off and just had this open, which wasn't terribly safe, but you know, it was a prototype and it worked great. And I convinced myself that this was a viable way forward. And so I took the plunge and I blew a hole in the side cover, which was sort of risky because you can't replace these. Poland doesn't make them anymore. So no more pull cord, drill start only. And then I made, there's videos of this, I made this, this disc that rides in that nice and smooth, and I bolted it to the original pull cord drum that went in here. So it was all stock parts. The way that this engaged with these was plastic on metal, but that's how it worked before, and it had a buffer spring in here. They call it the EPS, the Effortless Pull System. All that means is that the rope winds around a drum, and then there's another spring between what you're pulling on and what's turning the flywheel, so that when the compression cycle of the two-stroke engine spikes, the spring can compress and you don't feel that in your arm and your shoulder. Well, I made this and I put it together and it worked for a while and then it thrashed itself and it, then it, uh, this spring, it's amazing how light duty these are. I mean, you, you drop start this thing. There's a lot of force there, but it, it holds up when you're doing it by hand and the spring just loops around a pin there and then it just came out here and bent, it just had a little hook on the end that went around this thin plastic. And that ripped out. Okay, so I drilled through to the steel and I put a, put a bolt in it and I wrapped the broken end of the spring around that and I tack welded it. And that worked for a while and then the tack weld broke and I re-welded it and that worked for a while and then it just, it just mangled itself so it doesn't even fit together anymore. This blew out, kind of shredded the shoulder on this job. So... I, I don't know. It's the, the, the force from the drill can't be that much higher than the force from the pull cord because it's just the compression of the cylinder. It's not anything different. But I guess it's harder on this. So I, I tried again. I bought a replacement of these and it had a different design. Instead of having a, a 
I call these constant force springs. They're like in a tape measure. This is a beefy one, but sort of a wound spring like this. It had a torsion spring. And it didn't look like this. And it went in here, and there was another piece run on top. And so I modified that and bolted it to my adapter and got it in there. And I got the second start. It mangled itself. So, okay. Doesn't necessarily make sense to me, but I guess the drill is a lot harder on this thing than the pull cord. So I figured plastic is not up to the job. So I made this. There's a video of that. After, uh, you know, I used these for a while. I'm not going back to pulling, so let's, let's up the game. And I cut this apart and took all the plastic out of it and I welded it all up. And I made a profile, kind of like I did on this. I welded on here made it all one piece. And, I mean, I got four or five starts out of this thing. Not many. And it broke. Not even this. It was the, that was yesterday. It, it took chunks out of the teeth that I had ground into this thing. It, these little flippy, foldy sheet metal rigmarole things gouged out the steel. And so I dabbed some weld on it and reshaped it and got it back out there and got back to work. And I got three starts out of this one. And now it's gouged out. It won't engage. The welds on the top have broken. <clears throat> This is rotated relative to that. And the thrust washer, the welds have broken. And it's fallen back. And in here, these have broken. There's chunks out of those pawls. So I'm now breaking steel parts. And when you use a pull cord, it's just plastic and springs. I don't understand how the forces are that different. I mean, it's the same speed. It's the speed necessary to get the engine to kick over. It's the same reaction force because it's the same engine. But for whatever reason, this is not holding up. So, I think it's time to try what everybody else does. I'm going to pull this flywheel. I'm going to make a new widget that puts a, a nut out here. I don't want to use the nut on the flywheel. One, I don't want to over tighten it that much. So this, this starts counterclockwise. So if you just put a socket on that nut, you just unscrew it. So you got to tighten the crap out of it <clears throat> to get it to support enough torque to start the engine. And I, I don't like that idea. And for another matter, the side cover is, is quite deep way down in there. So I want to make some little adapter thing that will bolt to this flywheel in a positive way and come out with a hex that'll sit there so that I'm rigidly connected and I'm not going through these. And I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it holds up. I'm kind of baffled at these forces. So I'm just trying stuff.
Okay, that works. Starts, but it's not running right. But that's a separate problem. We'll see how long it lasts. My working theory, these are the little paws that I was trying to use. And they've got more weight on the engage side here. So when this thing would spin, they'd fling out. So I guess maybe, and I'm just guessing here, but maybe with a pull cord it would engage You'd give it a pull, and then it would start or it wouldn't, and you'd kind of do it in impulses like that. And with a drill, you could actually get it up to speed without it running. And so maybe it would be not running, but it would go fast enough that if these unloaded, they'd pop open. And then when they'd it'd slow back down, the drill would be free spinning, and it would spin back down, and it would tip in and catch just a corner and have a large impulse load and low engagement causing it to break things i hope that's the case if that's that would explain why this has not been working and would mean that this will be robust and continue to work for a long time but we'll see i'm just going to go and use this for a while but now i need to troubleshoot why i wasn't running right just clean the air filter i guess that's the first thing to check for um in any case this is going back out in the wild for some more abuse testing. If it holds up, that'll be the last iteration. If it doesn't, well, we'll get another video out of it. Wish me luck.